Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a little bit under the weather um, on Christmas Day, but I definitely wanted to do this video because I've been holding off on doing it for a while. Um, yeah, the book I'm going to recommend today is called Allies of the State, and it's by G. Chen and Bruce Dixon. Um, basically, what this book is about, it breaks down the history of China as far as like the economy goes. And it talks about how certain businesses are allowed, how China has, kind of has this um, idea of their, their, their form of a free market economy. Um, and a lot of these businesses that are, I guess, free market businesses are allowed to sell in China because they are somehow tied to the Communist Party in China. So there are politicians that are involved in the business side of these businesses that are allowed to sell in China. And it also goes through like the history dating back to the imperial prison, um, um, period through the Mao regime and everything and just basically gives a good, I guess, um, breakdown of I guess communism and how a communist country can have a somewhat of a free market when it comes to the businesses that are allowed to operate in their in their society. So I would recommend this book right here. Definitely go out and get it. Um, it has something to do indirectly with the topic that we're going to discuss. Um, it's not wholly to do with the topic that we're going to discuss because the only thing that really has it really has in common is the I, the fact that it deals with communism. Um, and I mean, the, the topic as a whole, you know, I'm not really going to focus too much on like, I guess, I guess the communist aspect of it, because this really isn't about communism. It's, kind of, it's more about Russia. Um, but I'm going to give a rundown of a period of time where the, I guess the Soviet Union then, so focused on African Americans to, um, I guess, be in opposition to the United States within. And it's not just the United States. We saw it, we see it in Latin America. We see it in, in Africa also. So recently there was an article that was posted by the, um, the Guardian magazine that basically stated that the, that Russia had targeted African-Americans in the 2016 election to get them not to vote in the 2016 election. Basically, this would have hurt only Hillary Clinton because the majority of African-American voters would have most likely voted for the Democratic ticket, regardless of who's on the ticket. Now, what I said during um, my IS One Minute video um, on a post was, um, this isn't something that's new, and the United States doesn't give any... The United States gives Russia a lot of ammunition to work with when it comes to these situations, because Russia oftentimes will use the fact that African-Americans are being oppressed in the United States um, in order to make it seem more appealing to them that Russia is an ally. And this has been something that's been going on since the, 19, the early 1900s, at least 1919. Um, during this period of time, we saw the Soviet Union target African-Americans um, in a period of where they basically said that it was the third international or a common turn or communist international. Um, and it was during this period that the Soviet Union was advocating for um, a worldwide communist regime. And they basically were saying that they would achieve this means by force or overthrowing world bourgeoisie. You know, and basically they were going into a lot of these countries and they, and they used the, 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 the current situation of the countries that were being targeted, which were mostly in Africa, Latin America and, and the African-American community in the United States. And they were looking, they were using the, the oppressive situations from the Western countries to basically say, this is what they're doing to you. You guys should be allies with us, you know. And it was effective in a lot of situations. We look at Cuba. We look at a lot of these African countries. We look at, you know, um, I don't think that communism really caught on with African-Americans in the United States. It's not really seen. I can't find a poll. And that was one of the other reasons why it took so long, because I was trying to find a poll where it actually said what African-Americans actually believe about communism. And there was really not many polls that said African-Americans had a favorable view of communism. Um, so... It didn't really catch on with African Americans, but during the nineteen during the nineteen hundreds, the early nineteen hundreds, from like nineteen nineteen to nineteen thirty five, very very prominent African Americans, um, authors, writers, you know, and, and 
experts and cotton, you know, cultivation, you know, we're all, you know, living among, we're going to the Soviet Union, you know, and some of their ancestors, some of the descendants of those people still live there today. I think it's around like 55,000 um, African, people of African descent that live in the Soviet Union today that are from that original wave that came between 1900s and the 1930s, you know, and of African, people of African descent from Africa and the United States that ended up relocating to the Soviet Union. So during the Third International, which was common turn, common turn, a communist international, um, they were advocating and they were pointing out things such as, you know, oppression and anti-colonialism and preaching all of these different ideals that they knew would resonate with African communities and Latin communities. So, OK, so sorry about that. So one of the things I think one of the main reasons why it really didn't catch on with people of Africa the sitting in the United States, because in the United States, we had the Communist Party. Now, the Communist Party would, would preach about oppression and discrimination against African workers. Um, they would look at capitalism and talk about the exploitation of capitalism. But at the same token, they would side with the labor unions that were very, very oppressive to the Af people of African descent in the United States. It was kind of like a, you know, the, the idea that they would, you know, talk about these things and say, yes, yes, this is bad, this is terrible, this is horrible, but then you would do the same thing with the, the labor unions and shake hands with these labor union leaders that really didn't give a fuck about the African Americans that were in the United States. And you see, you know, in the 1930s where the, you know, communist movement was hand in hand with the black liberation movement, you know, in, United, in Africa, you know, and some of the African Americans that decided to relocate to Liberia in the 1930s. And... They were one of the, you know, the they during this time they started talking about, you know, the the Negro question and anti colonialism and oppression from um, of Europeans in African countries. You know, this went on for a relatively long period of time. It was at least twenty years, twenty five years before they ended before common turn ended. You know, and the only reason why it ended is because the United States and Russia needed each other to stop Nazism. You know, and we just really what I what I would say to us as a people and you know eventually i'm going to go into um i'm going to talk about you know i'm going to do a video about cuba and why it why it took hold in cuba and why it didn't really take hold in the united states i want to do that comparison video to basically understand why communism was effective in cuba but not here in the african-american community um i kind of under, i kind of know why because in the united states it, it was a very very anti-communism country it could have never taken hold here because we were we for a period of time we effectively you know ran a campaign that persecuted and locked up people that even were connected to communism and cuba didn't was it wasn't so much that there was a whole revolution where the communist party won and basically kicked out all the westerners in the country um to build to build a communist regime that's been in power since the 1960s now, you know, I, as I said earlier, I couldn't find any definitive polls that basically said that African Americans have a favorable view of communism as much as I looked. I thought that there would be some polls out there that actually showed that African Americans do have a favorable view of communism, but there really isn't. It's just, it just, all it was showing was that millennials um, are less likely to think that um, communism is an issue. Um, as far as like Russia goes, um, and how I feel about Russia targeting African Americans. I think that Russia will continue to do what they've always done. And the only reason why they, they will be effective in this is if we continue to give them reasons to be effective with it. If we continue to overlook things as far as systemic racism, um, oppression, police brutality, uh, any other kind of um, uh, perceived oppression. Russia will always have an effective argument against the United States with minority and marginalized groups. And until we start addressing those problems in this country, we're never going to be able to effectively combat that. And this is this is something that has been going on since 1919. And we're still talking about it now. And in the future, we might have another election where Russia again targets minorities because we continue to give them reasons to. 
Now, I served in the military for almost 13 years. And I don't pretend for one time, I, I've never pretended for once in my life that there was no such thing as racism. And the main reason why I know that there, I, I don't do that is because even when you were doing like the surveys in the military, I realized that there was racism. And the reason why Russia can use this stuff against the United States is because we continue to show them. Now, it's not saying that there's no racism in Russia, but I think that when we have a history of slavery and we are able to overlook you know, certain things such as systemic racism, systemic oppression based on, you know, where mar where marginalized groups such as minorities are convicted of crimes at a much higher rate than their white counterparts, then Russia will always have a legitimate argument, you know, against the United States, against capitalism, because we can also argue that in a capitalist country that we don't see that upward climb from minority groups that we can, we t tend to see from their white counterparts. I really, I recently saw an article, and it said an African American with a college degree is less is is almost it is on the same path to receive a job as a white guy that dropped out of school and received a GED. And I I look at that and I'm saying to myself that there has to be an issue with this, and this is an issue that we have in this country. And as long as we go without addressing this issue, we will always have these attacks from the Soviet Union, Russia, wherever you want, whatever you want to call them this week, you know, they'll always have an argument to use against us with minority groups. So until we address these, these issues, we're just giving them the ammo to use against us. So that's all I have to say about this video. The next video I'll probably be doing will probably have to do with something a little more controversial, but maybe I'll just keep it a little bit more historical and focus on like the history of politics in ancient Greece and or something along those lines. Maybe, maybe I'll talk about the constitution. I haven't decided what I'm going to do this week, but it's definitely going to be something that's going to, uh, that I want to spark a debate with or spark a discussion with, you know, that's all I want people to do. And I want them to learn something from these videos. I want them to pick up something and enjoy it. You know, I don't want people to get into this back and forth about who's right and who's wrong, because at the end of it all, we all have our opinions and we're allowed to have those opinions. So till the next video, have a great day, guys. Simplify.